You get told your narrative as a young girl. There's so much pressure from norms and gender roles. Just so many things that it's just, we're just like spoon fed. I wrote about falling in love with a girl for the first time and I was really scared about that. A lot of opinions were like, you're not gonna get the big record deal. There's not a queer Taylor Swift. There's not a queer Katy Perry. That was really painful and it took a major hit on my confidence. I just was like having a panic attack inside the whole time. Am I gonna box myself in? Am I gonna alienate people? Is this gonna be bad for my career? Little Carrie Fletcher was a super nerdy, really quiet, extremely anxious Jersey Shore kid. <laughs> kind of trashy, kind of classy. <laughs> I think growing up, I was handed a script and it's just like, these are the rules. It's like, well, who the f created these rules? We both grew up in New Jersey. I definitely don't think there were a lot of LGBTQ people that were out that could be role models for a young queer kid growing up there. I got a lot of love, but it was tough love. And so talking about soft things like feelings and like emotions was something that I didn't really have a lot of practice doing. Carrie's an empath more than anyone I know. I'm sensitive. If somebody's going through grief or some sort of really intense emotion, I, t I take it on. Like I can feel it in my own body. I love my parents more than anything in the entire world, but they sheltered me a lot as a kid. Bad things were kept from me. Oh, Carrie can't watch the news. Don't tell her about that. Like, don't let her hear that. I'm gonna get emotional talking about it. Like, bad things do happen, and hard things happen, and we go through a lot. Uh, I just have so many feelings. To feel less crazy, I need to like get them outside of my body. I remember that time when you took my hand, looked into my eyes, said, I got you, darling. There's been those times for me that I've just like cried at hearing somebody's voice because there's so much raw emotion in it. And like, what a cool and empowering like interaction to be able to have. I started with classical vocal training when I was about five years old. And then I started writing songs because I think it was the one way for me to put into words what I was feeling. I mean, you have some pipes. Do you want to get into that? So I'll drink this wine like it's medicine for the mind on to my tongue Oh, cause I still taste your love When I met Carrie, she was nervous to perform. When she sings, it's crazy. Like, she has this incredible tone and she does these runs that are unique to her. I don't think she knew the power of her voice and the power of her presence on stage. Carrie went on to be on The X Factor. She was in a girl group that Simon Cowell put her into. And I was just like, she's not, this isn't it. Not a country girl group thing. She's a solo artist. Going to college, I went to the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music at NYU and I interned for a management company. I interned for a publishing company. I was like a sponge. I was like absorbing it all. I'm like, how do I be the best possible artist? And I just remember having these thoughts of wanting to tell a story and to convey a feeling. But like, how does that fit into being a pop star? I don't think I'm that confident. This is what it's supposed to look like. That's what it's supposed to sound like. So much comparison. I 100% tried to conform to it. There was always something in my gut that I was just like, you need to spend time like figuring out who you are and what you want to represent and be more comfortable in, you know, my artistry and like finding my voice. We were just at the beach one night frolicking around and one of our friends had his camera and just started like filming us. We'd only just started dating then. He looked back at the footage the next day and he was like, honestly, I feel like this could be the music video for Wasted Youth. The entire first Finding Fletcher EP was about falling in love with a woman for the first time. And that was something that no one knew when she was singing these songs. There was a lot of people that didn't want her to put out that video. You know, we were still an independent artist at the time. I just remember being told, people don't need to know. Are you sure you want to talk about that? If I talk about this, am I gonna be pigeonholed into just being LGBT artist Fletcher? Which is something that like queer artists still today are like very much facing. I was so nervous about judgment and who I would alienate. Breaking out of that was difficult. 
and a really emotionally challenging time for her. But at the end of the day, she decided she'd rather be herself. I look at that as being the moment of like stepping into my skin. That was the beginning of me sharing my story. Wasted Youth was definitely the most well-received video and song that I have ever put out. All of the press was all over it. And so I think it was really powerful for her to see the reaction and know that there's so much power in honesty and like being true to yourself. People are down with this. Like I can talk about my experience and my sexuality is still something that I'm discovering. To be able to do that alongside an audience of people that, you know, a lot are going through the same thing. It created the Fletch fam. You know, all these kids all over the world just like fell in love with her and they saw themselves within her. It allowed me to gain some leverage to eventually sign a record deal of my dreams, um, which ended up being Capitol Records. She walked into a major label as a priority artist who knew her vision and she already had a fan base, so it was like, you can't mess with me. I played this venue four years ago for literally 15 people. What I do think Carrie's doing is she's giving a voice to people who are different. There are so many young Fletchers out there who need to see themselves in other people to be able to have that confidence to be like, you know what, like, I can do it too. Nobody wants to be fed anything that's like calculated and contrived and not real because we want perspectives and we want real voices and those are the ones that we want to lift up.